are you one of those people that create music playlists? For me, it's not been something that I've done an awful lot of, but I do know there's people out there that'll have a playlist for listening to in the car, something to work out to, maybe a party playlist, an 80s playlist. They'll have one for every situation. Well, the other week I did need to create a playlist and it was 15 hours long and I stuck it in my watch. Now, bear that in mind when I show you what a 10 hour playlist looked like back in 1992. Here it is. I think I'd better explain. OK, so it's a cassette deck, but this is no ordinary deck. It's quite a nice looking one. But other than that, this one holds five individual cassettes. You can load them in at the front here. This carousel spins around. And you can put five cassettes inside the machine. Now, I think we'd better put this in context. This was 1992. Now, why might you want to load five cassettes inside one tape machine? Well, when you think about it, back then, the tape was king. The pre-recorded album sold more on cassette than it did on vinyl or CD. At the time this machine came out, home CD recording wasn't yet a reality and MP3s hadn't yet become a thing. So if you wanted to play back a lot of music in a row, the only way was to get a CD changer. And those were most commonly found in the boot of a vehicle. Smaller CD changers could sometimes be found in home hi-fi, but you were always restricted to playing back pre-recorded albums. If you wanted to play back a lot of music that you'd selected and compiled yourself into what you'd call now a playlist, but back then was a mixtape, the only way to do it would be to play it through a number of cassettes. And that's where this machine comes in. Now, things like this were probably mostly in use in shops or in a gym. Those are places I've heard them being used. Admittedly, that's not a very large market, but presumably Sony thought there was enough demand to make it worthwhile bringing out a cassette changer. Now, if you want, you can start at tape one and play your way all the way through to tape five. Or if you get bored with a tape, you can press the skip button to jump to the next one. Or you can select a specific tape from those five. Of course, the reason I've picked this machine up is to demonstrate it to you, because for me, I don't remember seeing a cassette changer in the shop. So I'm fascinated by the way that this thing works, the way it spins around, selects a tape, puts it in the right position. It's quite a neat machine. Now, if you want to know the model details, it's a Sony and the model is a TCC521. Now, you might have noticed, if you're a clever clogs, that the tapes I was using during the course of the demonstration before were C90s, and of course, five C90s will get you seven and a half hours. So where's my 10-hour figure come from? Well, of course, there were one 20-minute cassettes available quite easily, although I didn't really use those myself because they were a little bit prone to snapping. And if you note in the manual here, it doesn't recommend using them, but if you have to, don't fast-forward and rewind, just play them from the beginning to the end. Now this deck does have all the standard cassette features that are available at the time, such as track skip, which looks for the gap in between tracks and jumps to the next one. So as long as your compilation's got gaps in it, you're okay. It's also got the ability to play either side of the cassette without, of course, flipping the cassette over, which is quite a standard feature at this time. And of course, that's the feature that enables you to play back from side A on tape one, all the way through five tapes to the end of side B on tape five. And of course, it's also, in my opinion, a very attractive machine with its vacuum fluorescent VU meters and its gunmetal finish. Now, these buttons on the front enable you to do a few little tricks. For example, Shuffle will pick a random cassette to play. It doesn't pick individual tracks randomly. It just picks a full cassette and will play that randomly every time you press that Shuffle button. Now, Sync Mode... It's a little bit naughty. It will let you record five individual CDs to five individual cassettes. That seems a little bit piratey to me, but never mind. The next button along, All Rewind, will rewind all your cassettes. Not something I can think I'd have much cause to do frequently, but it's nice to have a button that you can put all your cassettes in the machine, or at least five of them, and rewind them all one after the other. And then the final one, Blank Skip, obviously skips past the blank parts on a cassette. Very useful for getting to that part of the end of a side on a cassette, where you've got maybe three minutes sometimes that's got nothing on it. It'll skip past that, flip the heads around, and play the other side of the tape. And with a really good cassette in this machine and Dolby C switched on, you can get some really good quality recordings and of course playback. But enough of that, let's get inside the machine. I'm sure that's what everyone's here to have a look at. So you can see the carousel in the middle there. Let's uh, press this button here and we'll spin it around and you can see what happens. 
So the five cassettes are held on there, they're held away from the front, the carousel comes up to the front, pulls a cassette, pulls it back into the mechanism of the machine. It's a very interesting mechanism, the way it works, and it's a very simple one as well, and that's possibly one of the features that's quite good about this machine. There were other cassette changes available, specifically from Pioneer, I think, and Mitsubishi had one. Uh, there was a Philips device, and there was even another Sony one back in the 80s, but most of those are plagued with reliability problems because of the complexity of the mechanism. They're trying to do all sorts of things with the tapes, hold them in like a toaster-type rack and put them in and out one after the other, the Phillips shot them down a chute and flipped it over. This keeps things very simple and therefore that's why it's still working after 20 odd years. I think this 1992 device though was probably the last of the cassette changes that came to market. Of course after that, as we've mentioned already, MP3, CDRs, all that kind of stuff took off. But it's interesting to look back at 1992 to see how hard and complex it was to play more than a full cassette's worth of your own selected music. So this is your 1992 playlist. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want, subscribe. If you don't want, don't subscribe. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. Hello YouTube, it's Super Techno Man 93 here. Today we're going to be looking at this remote control. As you can see, it's remote control size. It's got lots of buttons on it, like volume up and down. I notice there's no number 13 on here, so I don't know how you get to that channel, but... Hey, what's all this racket about? I've decided to become a YouTube superstar. And why did you have the light switched off? Because for some reason, all YouTube reviews are filmed in the dark. Well, you're going to have to carry on with this later on, because Home's Under the Hammer's coming on the television, and I need the remote control. OK, well, it looks like fame and fortune are going to have to wait. Let me just switch off this potato.